Hi everyone, my name is Maggie Morgan, and today by PowerPoint, I'm going to be doing a brief history and overview on the American Library Association. First, a few facts. The American Library Association is a nonprofit organization founded on October 6, 1876. Its current president is Julius C. Jefferson Jr., with its headquarters located in Chicago, Illinois, and it has 64,000 members. The American Library Association, or ALA, is the world's largest and oldest library association, with its head office located in Chicago, Illinois. The ALA is made of 11 divisions, each meant to represent a different library type or library function specialization. Beneath the 11 divisions are its 15 membership groups, or roundtables as they are usually called, with each representing a different subject area. The ALA's mission is to provide leadership for development, promotion, and improvement of library and information services and the profession of librarianship in order to enhance learning and ensure access to information for all, according to the ALA's website. The ALA's beginnings go back to a conference held in September 1853 during the public library movement in New York City. The purpose of the conference was to bring together librarians so they could share ideas and determine new ways to improve libraries throughout the United States. Many participants wanted this convention to become a regular event, along with the forming of an organization to continue it. Unfortunately, it took more than 20 years for this goal to become a reality, when a group of librarians organized a second conference in 1876 in Philadelphia. One of the most accredited and recognized of the organizers of this meeting was Melville Dewey, the creator of the Dewey Decimal System. System. It was Dewey himself that developed the ALA's constitution the following year in 1877 and eventually became its fourth president. The ALA went through many revisions in its early years and in actuality did not accomplish much. It was not until 1906 that the ALA established its first official headquarters in Boston, but it only lasted a year. Three years later, in 1909, the ALA established its first permanent headquarters in Chicago at the Chicago Public Library. It was during World War I that the ALA started to transform itself into a service organization rather than just a professional association. As World War I continued, the ALA started a library war fund to provide books for soldiers and have makeshift libraries established at military bases. It was this work that encouraged the ALA to play a bigger role in their country. They wanted to do more and be more, but faced many challenges and setbacks in trying to do so. After World War I, the ALA sought to gain new members and funding, but the Great Depression resulted in budget cuts for libraries all over the United States, preventing the ALA from moving forward with its new plans. Libraries are always the first things to get its budgets cut, sad but true. It took years for things to improve even after libraries' budgets were reinstated by the government. The ALA began to gain new members as the country's librarians started working again. After the 1930s, the ALA took on a new kind of war, a war on intellectual freedom. There were those who wanted certain books to be removed from libraries for their content, whether it was sexual content, political views, or other sensitive subjects. It was in 1939 that the ALA approved the Library Bill of Rights in response to challenges involving censorship. Even though this did not fix the issue legally, it brought more public attention to the issue of censorship. It got people to ask, why should a, this book be removed from a library very based on the opinions of a few? During World War I, the ALA once again organized fundraisers and book donations for the U.S. Armed Forces, as it did during World War I. In the aftermath of World War II, the ALA was unsure of what to do with its organization. In the 1950s and 60s, the ALA began to improve its strained relationships with its divisions, who wanted to be more dependent. The ALA worked towards getting government aid for libraries, which eventually led to the Library Service Acts of 1956. When the Civil Rights Movement began, the ALA had to decide if it would allow libraries who practice discrimination to have ALL membership. It was in 1964 that the ALA declared it would do whatever it could to provide library access to everyone, regardless of their race, religion, personal beliefs, etc. Unfortunately, their actions did not have much results. They were not a legal organization after all. 
1969, the ALA established the Social Responsibilities Roundtable to allow the ALA to become more democratic, to give their members more voice in their matters. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, the ALA faced many conflicts inside the and outside the organization. When a former ALA treasurer left, left, his harsh critique left the ALA wanting to become more of a liberal learning organization. With new technologies being incorporated throughout the US, the ALA hosted a seminar to determine what libraries would allow to their, their collections. This included things like film strips, projectors, and eventually public use computers. In 1982, the ALA began Banned Books Week to bring attention to books that had been attacked by censorship attempts. With the introduction of the internet in the 1990s, debate on intellectual freedom would change for the ALA. They had to study censorship in new ways, especially since public libraries had added internet access to their computers. There's the ALA was against the new filtering software most library installed on their computers, saying that this went against intellectual freedom. Starting in the 2000s, the ALA had new disputes with the government. In the aftermath of September 11th's terrorist attack, Congress passed the U.S. Patriot Act. This granted the FBI access to library records. The ALA argued that this was a breach of the constitutional rights and violation of privacy of library users. Even today, after the ALA's 40th anniversary in 2016, the organization still works to preserve intellectual freedom throughout the country and support variants by setting an example for them and guidelines for them to follow. Some important dates, dates in ALA history. 1876, the American Library Association is first formed in Philadelphia. In 1892, ALA Council is, the, is formed with 10 elected members. In 1906, ALA's first headquarters is opened in Boston. 1911, the ALA elects its first female president, president before women were granted the right to vote. 1939, ALA implements the Library Bill of Rights and Code of Ethics. You can find more information on these two subjects on the ALA's website. In 1944, ALA forms their Division of Public Libraries, the now present Public Library Association. In 1945, ALA established its permanent headquarters in Chicago, where it still is today. In 1959, the first National Library Week takes place. In 1967, the ALA opens the Office for Intellectual Freedom. In 1970, the ALA opened its Office for literacy and outreach and forms the force on gay liberation, the United States first LGBT professional organization. In 1976, the ALA elects its first African-American president during its 100th anniversary. In 1982, America's first Banned Books Week takes place. And in 2016, ALA celebrates its 40th anniversary.